Hi, I'm Caroline Mitchell, canine behaviorist at Good Doggy. So I want to talk today a little bit about aggression and aggressive behavior. And I really want to kind of get into what it actually is, because a lot of people think of aggression as biting, snarling, fighting type behaviors. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that. And when we see a dog that's showing these type of behaviors, it's very easy to label that dog as aggressive. But actually dogs aren't aggressive. Sometimes they behave in an aggressive way, but they're not bad dogs. The word aggression often triggers a belief in people that a dog is bad, but that's not the case. Um, we'll find out more about that as we go on through this video. But you'll see that aggressive behavior is actually, in a lot of cases, very normal and very important and useful. Um, it's a big part of a dog's communication. So let's start with what aggression isn't. So many people consider aggressive behavior just to be biting, but there's a lot more to it than that. Grumbling, growling, snapping, snarling, teeth bearing, um, and of course a bite are all aggressive behaviors. Um, and when we talk about a bite, we talk about anything from just a, a sort of a, a grazing of the skin with the teeth to a full on bite that creates serious injury. Biting is a pivotal time if you have a dog. This is often the time that people start to really worry and think they have a problem with their dog. At this stage, it's actually much harder to fix. The, the time to fix this was much sooner when it was on a buildup, and you'll see we'll talk about that a little bit um, in the next section. But aggressive behavior exists on a scale. So when you're worrying about a dog showing aggression, we're looking for the early signs because by the time we've got to biting and snarling and things like that, the problem has already started to escalate and it's been going on probably for quite a while um, that maybe you didn't notice. So hopefully this video will help you identify all of the aggressive behaviors and when the best time is to take action if you're worried at all. So aggression actually um, is a form of communication. So dogs use aggression to communicate how they're feeling um, and actually as a way to de-escalate aggression as opposed to um, making a situation worse. So actually when we think of aggression, we do think about fighting, you know, but it's not an invitation to start a fight. When a dog shows aggressive behavior, they're trying to de-escalate something. They're trying to make something stop. They're trying to end a situation or stop it from getting out of control. Um, so for example, maybe we've got two dogs um, and they're playing together in the park and one of them just gets a little bit too rough. The first dog might then growl to let the other dog know that that's happened and the other dog will hear the growl and he'll know that that was a communication to stop that level of play and calm down. So the play then stops and the communication was successful. The dog wanted the play to stop, so he growled and that happened. He didn't growl because the other dog um, was too rough with him, so he could start a fight with him over it. He wanted the behavior to stop. What about a dog that's eating, who is um, growling at you when you approach the food? The point of that growl is to stop you from approaching the food. They're not inviting you to come over and have a, a bit of a tussle over it. The dog's asking you to leave. So we can see that aggression is there actually to stop a situation getting out of hand and not to make it worse. Of course, in that situation, maybe um, you really want that food and you wanna take it from the dog. So you will then change your behavior and then your dog will have to change his and that could escalate. But the point of the initial aggression was not to start an argument or a fight. So we've talked about growling and we've talked about um, snapping and biting and those types of aggression. But before that would have come other communication that maybe was a little bit more subtle and a bit easier to miss. So maybe the dog might have shown some stiffness. So let's think about the dog who was eating his dinner as you've walked into the room, he might have stiffened up. He might have also shown a bit of side eye, maybe he tilted a little bit, so he was staring at you a little bit. His tail might have started switching, twitching. So there's lots of um, signs that may have happened on this scale before he even got to growling. But Growling um, was the thing that was most effective. It was the thing that changed the situation and that de-escalated it the best. The other signals have been ignored. So he had to work his way up the scale. 
at this point, um, the situation has already become a very emotional situation. It's escalated very quickly because those early messages um, were missed. So perhaps after a while, your dog skips out the stiffness and the side eye and the twitchy tail and just goes straight to growling because what he will learn over time is that that's the most effective way to get you to stop approaching. But it started long before that. So let's talk about that. So aggression um, is an emotional response. So let's think about emotions on a scale. Um, your scale starts at neutral. And when your dog's in a neutral state, they're nice and calm and relaxed. They're not worrying about anything. They're not too excited. They're not overjoyed, but they're not sad, you know. So they're just a nice, neutral, happy, chilled out state. Now, whatever the emotion is that we're thinking about, whether it's anger or fear or loneliness or frustration or sadness, whatever that is, um, when the emotion is felt at a low level, we know that that is small and it's very manageable. So there'll be very subtle signs. So if your dog's happy, he might sort of have a little spring in his step. If he's feeling kind of sad, his tail might droop a little bit. So at the very bottom of that scale, as it's, you start to move through this emotional process, it starts very, very subtle. So those kind of signals can be easy to miss if you're not really looking for them. The higher up the scale you go, the more um, the behavior gets bigger and the harder it is to ignore. The response will grow, maybe it'll become noisier, it'll become bigger, it'll become louder. So um, at the top end of the scale then, so you'll go through all of these kinds of behaviors. So you're starting with kind of a little bit of a sort of a spring in the step, then the tail might start to wag, might get a bit bouncy, then might start jumping, barking, lunging, etc. until eventually you get to the very top end of the scale. And this is when we, um, the behavior can become aggressive. It's because it's overwhelmed, there's too much. Um, on this scale also is the threshold line. I talk about threshold quite a lot. This is the part where the dog's brain gets switched off and they start to go in kind of automatic mode. So check out, um, a video I made about that. Specifically, that video was about overexcitement and things like walking the dog and things like that. But it can apply to any emotion. The scale is the same. So once you get to a certain point, the dog will go over threshold. So if this is a reactive dog, this is when you start to see them lunging and barking. They've lost control. You can't speak to them. They're not listening. Um, if they're excitable, they're not listening to the same kind of thing. They're jumping, grabbing at the lead, perhaps. If they've become very lonely, a separation anxiety, for example, they might start chewing something. They might pee. They've gone over threshold, okay? So once you've gone past threshold, then there's another line later on where they get past that, the behavior's got out of hand. I mentioned loneliness, and it's maybe hard to imagine what a lonely dog might feel like when they become aggressive at that top end of the scale. But often that's... Um, perhaps behavior that's been self-directed. So um, in terms of separation anxiety, they might be chewing on their own feet or they might chase their tail, that kind of thing. Or they could take it out on another dog or even your own furniture under your house. So you know when it gets out of hand, that's when it can become aggressive. So aggression is just a higher version of lunging and barking, which is a higher version of tail twitching, um, which is a higher version of stiffness and staring. So all of these behaviors exist on this scale. When you get to the point of aggression, it's escalated to the point where the dog can't cope anymore. There is a complete loss of control. Um, so there's no point in you trying to control your dog. Um, he's not in control of himself right now. So the lonely dog might take it out on himself or his crate, a frustrated dog might direct it onto you by mouthing and grabbing. A frightened dog could direct it in any direction. Um, when a dog becomes very frightened, um, that's when they can redirect. Maybe they're grabbing your trouser leg. Maybe they're attacking another member of the dog family or something like that. Um, and a sad dog might direct it to himself by chewing his paws or licking his tail or something along those lines. Aggression can also occur as a result of illness. Now this is not my area of expertise but what I do know is that illness and injury are a big cause of aggressive behavior. It happens a lot more than you think and it's not just obvious pain um, although that is a factor but um, when we think about pain and injury we're thinking about dogs that are limping, um, head shaking, weird kind of behaviors like that but actually there are other things that can cause aggression, um, illnesses, 
and conditions like epilepsy and some of the treatments as well for those things can also cause problems. So those kinds of things can be quite internal, maybe neurological disorders, hormone imbalances and metabolic disorders as well. The list can go on. There's lots of things that could be happening on the inside that you don't know about. So whenever your dog starts to show aggression, the first thing to do is head to your vet. Um, explain to them the kind of aggression that you are dealing with. Don't be embarrassed about this. Don't hold back. Tell them as much as you can, because the more information they get, the easier it is for them to start looking for the right types of conditions and to, to start doing the right kinds of tests. We feel very protective over our dogs and we don't want to talk about them being aggressive and we don't want to kind of um, let people think that they're aggressive. So we tend to sort of hold it back a little bit. But when you're speaking to your vet, they're a professional. They've heard all this stuff before um, and they know what um, what they're doing so if you are having an aggressive problem that's just suddenly started then that's the place to start I think go to your vet speak to them about it and be frank as you can and as honest as you can so they can start to look for it um, and get that under control because once you've got it under control you may well have um, habits that have been created in the meantime but behaviors can work on that but if your dog has um, a disorder that is causing aggression um there's nothing that any behaviourist or trainer is going to be able to do to train your dog to behave differently because that underlying problem is always going to be sitting there in the background. So get that ruled out before you do anything else. Here's an often overlooked cause of aggression. Um, we use aggression, our dogs use aggression. In fact, all animals use aggression to keep themselves and their families safe. So for example, let's imagine somebody has come and stood in your front garden today and they're looking through your window at you. What would you do? So there's lots of options, um, but you might start by just shouting through the window, tapping on the window and asking them to leave. Um, and this might work, they might go away and that's fine. So this is very, very low level stuff. We're trying something small and soft to start with just to see how we get on. But maybe if that didn't work, you might wanna make your point a little bit stronger. So maybe you shout louder, maybe you hammer louder on the window. Perhaps then if that didn't work, you might go outside and try to talk to them. Maybe you might try to even push them away from your garden. You might try to physically move them. Um, and then if they still continue to ignore them, perhaps you then push up towards threatening them, or you might call in backup. That might be um, some people from inside the house, or you might call the police or whatever it is you do. Everybody makes a different choice in these situations, but the point is we usually start with something small and we will just um, increase the assertiveness of our responses as we get ignored. We've done this to keep ourselves safe and our home safe and our family safe. You're not an aggressive person. We can't label you like that because you've just shown some aggressive behavior in a difficult situation. So this situation will escalate until eventually you might end up um, resorting to fighting with this person. But as I say, we couldn't label you as an aggressive person because that just wouldn't really be fair. If you just ran outside and went straight towards aggression, there could be a good reason for that. Maybe this guy has come to your garden every single day for the past month and you've tried being nice to him and you've tried reasoning with him and you know that none of that's worked. So your first response now is just get out there and just um, show him all the aggression that you have and just to have him to move on. So you've learned that those subtle messages have not worked in the past, but when this is the first time it's happening, then you start easy and you work your way through the scale. And the same thing happens for our dogs. The same thing will happen when somebody comes into our home. Maybe your dog is trying to use um, communication to say that he wants somebody to leave the house or he doesn't want them coming near your fence or he's afraid to go near a dog in the park. It will start small and when we ignore that then we'll go to the next level and the next level and the next level and it will continue to escalate becoming less and less easy to ignore until eventually it could end up resulting in fighting and over time the same thing. The dog will just resort straight to, to the fighting part because the rest of it doesn't work and it just takes up time and it's pointless. But we can see here that there's always a reason here. This is important um, because the reason came first. We tried different things. The aggressive behavior scale worked its way up at um, and ended up at the top, which is what people traditionally think of as aggression. But actually all of that's been aggression. Shout, shouting is aggression. Uh, banging on a window is aggression. Um, so all of those things, mild as they are, all classify as aggressive behavior, but there was a good reason. 
And the last kind of regression we're going to talk about is prey aggression. This is a little bit different from the others. Um, this is very calculated and planned kind of aggression, um, and it's designed to capture, hunt, and it's necessary. Dogs hunt so that they can eat. This is one of their primal needs. Um, if you look at Maslow's pyramid of needs, you'll see that eating is on the very bottom of the pyramid. It's the most important thing. And I think we can all agree that if we all went without food for long enough, then there's nothing else we can do. No amount of training or you know, mindset is gonna change the fact that we won't be able to survive unless we get some food. So it's extremely important, very, very important primal need. So the instinct will always remain. Our dogs will always have this instinct to be, to kind of try and hunt. And they practice this all the time. So you'll see them practice on each other in the park through play. A lot of play um, could look a little bit like hunting. They practice stalking behaviors, chasing each other, grabbing each other in certain ways. They try pinning each other and then they spring around and pretend that they're being pinned and all this kind of stuff. And this is important. They practice this behavior a lot because it's them honing their their fighting prey aggression skills in a really safe way. But it's usually easy to tell the difference. One, the other dog will be mutually involved in this. Um, there'll be a, an element of cooperation. This dog is not screaming for his life and running away. Although he might be screaming because actually they do practice this kind of stuff and some of them can be quite convincing. But if you're not sure, look for soft floppy kind of bodies, tails flopping about. Often whenever they're wrestling, you'll see this tail flip flopping about in the background. There's no tension to it. The body's not tense and the eyes are not staring and fixed, you know. So you'll get a sense of um, there's no serious behind this. And remember the twitchy tail, the stiffness, the stiff eyes, um, stiff ears even. Those are the very early signs of aggression. So if they're not even there at this stage, then um, you're, you can be fairly sure that these dogs are just doing a very convincing job of playing. You know, it's a bit like the wrestling, but for dogs, you know. We watch the wrestling on TV. We know they're not really hurting each other. It's all just been staged and they're playing out this little kind of role in this game. Um, dogs are just the same. Once they've mutually agreed to have a go at this, um, and usually they do that by doing these little kind of play bounces and play hops. So look out for them when it looks like they're kind of slamming their paws down at the front with a bomb in the air. That can be a very, very quick invitation to play. Um, and the other dog will probably reciprocate and then they'll start going through these kind of hunting and prey kind of rituals. But this is a different kind of aggression. Um, and that is related to resources and things like that. So when you're looking on Maslow's Pyramid, you'll see there's food on, on there, but also resources, territory, that kind of stuff. Anybody that comes near their territory when they're hunting and things, that kind of aggression will come out then too. So finally, what did we learn? We know that aggression is normal, but that doesn't mean that we should ignore it. Um, as I've mentioned already, once we start to see that real big aggressive behavior, the problem has already started and it's been going on for a while. So look out for those very early signs. That's the time to get a behaviorist in. It's so easy to fix when the behavior is only just away from neutral. Um, when you're just starting to see signs of issues and problems, um, we can just rein it straight back in again. It's very easy at that stage. But when you do start to notice that you have an aggression problem, maybe you have one already, and you're looking to decide what do we do next, start at the vet. Um, go there, get the all clear, get them to do proper checks. You can ask them to do pain profiles um, and all different things like that so that they can look for problems that might be causing the aggression that you're seeing in your dog. Um, once you've got the all clear, or if they found something, they've changed that so it's fixed, then you get a behaviorist in who can properly assess your dog. We know that the behavior has already started to escalate. It's been there for a while, um, so we don't want to mess around with this. Get a proper behaviourist in who can give you a proper assessment and give you the tools to start de-escalating that straight away and then start to work on fixing it. If your behaviourist recommends a muzzle, um, then you should muzzle train your dog because we know that behaviour is escalating. We don't want to mess around with aggression. When you get things wrong, if the timing gets wrong, it can change very, very fast. The situation can change fast. We don't want that to happen. But if it does, the muzzle is there to catch your dog and make sure they don't make a mistake that everyone regrets. It's a tool. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make your dog aggressive. I'm sad to say that probably the problem is already there, you know. So 
all you're doing is being responsible. You're trying to make things safe for everybody that's working with your dog. And it will give everybody confidence. And the more confidence people have around your dog, then um, the calmer your dog will be. When a dog is already kind of working its way up through the scale, that emotional scale, and people around them are really anxious and nervous, then that just adds more problems into the mix. So the more confident people can be, the more calmer they can be, um, the better the outcome is going to be in that exact situation. So it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, but you can be sure that um, it's better than it would have been had none of those things been in place. So don't um, overthink the muzzle. It's just there as a tool to keep people safe while you fix the problem. It's the responsible thing to do. Um, so don't take this to heart. Don't overthink it. And you're going to use this until the problem is fixed. Um, and when you're working with aggression, it must be dealt with in proper stages. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out where is the underlying problem to this aggression. So if it's a fear of something, we'll maybe start working on that. Um, if the dog is resource guarding food, we're going to start trying to teach them they don't have to, that resources are plentiful. We're going to start to fix that need. If um, their aggression, for whatever reason, if they're worried about their boundaries, we're going to start to show them that their boundaries are safe. And um, one way we might do that for boundaries, for example, is sometimes people have a kind of a, a free for all where people can just come and go to the house as they please. That's a lovely sociable way to live. But dogs find this very chaotic and they don't like it. Um, they don't like the people just turning up in and out through the front door um, of people that don't live there. So if you have um, a family member or a neighbor or somebody that just shows up, then they need to be shown that that person is not a risk. But really, we would probably just stop doing that. We'd put a protocol in at the front door, things like that. So you start with the underlying problem first. That takes away the cause of the aggression, the, the unfulfilled need that provoked the aggression to start. And then once that need is gone, you can start working on the habit that's been left behind. Never treat aggression with aggression. Um, aversive work methods work because they threaten um, pain on a dog, basically. And even shouting, which is a human version of aggression, can be threatening to some dogs, especially when they're very anxious or they're very sad. Um, threatening a dog by shouting at them or nudging them or jerking a lead, anything like that, even those low level things um, are not um, going to de-escalate a problem. In fact, what we can see is they're more likely to push a behavior up in scale. So earlier in the example that I gave of the dog that was protecting their food, um, that dog growled to tell you that they wanted you to go. Now, if you had replied with an aggressive response, maybe you shouted at them or you kicked the food bowl away or you continue to approach, that escalates the situation, which is the opposite of what the dog was trying to do. So there's no situation where an aversive method is going to be useful here because all it's going to do is push the behavior, that emotion, further up the scale and it's going to make the behavior bigger and more intense. Aggression never ever made a dog or a person or a cat or a rat anything at all. It never made them feel safer. It never made them feel happier. It never made them feel less frustrated, less angry, and it never made them feel more connected to their family. So these kind of methods um, are not going to work to solve these kinds of problems. We need to come back from that. We need to be calm. We need to show confidence and we need to address the need of the problem rather than just responding to that aggressive communication. Um, we need to get to the heart of it, fix that, and then you can use different kinds of methods that um, can help a dog learn that aggressive behavior was not required and solve those habits. Um, so hopefully that has been helpful. I'll pop a link up to the threshold video and I hope you have a good day. Speak to you soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye.